Hey, I'm Willem. I built this van on my own in 77 days with no experience, and here's my full van tour. First of all, I decided I wanted an L-shaped kitchen. I made the kitchen out of beach. It's 30 millimeter beach. I deliberately left these shelves here. I don't actually drink anymore, but it makes a great drinks cabinet for some books and some cleaning equipment. This is the start of my random side quest. Got your Red Bull 400, my ultra marathon. Hopefully they're gonna get this filled. They also built an outside shelf, which pops up like this and attaches to the frame of the van. And then you got the outside shelf for summer. In the front of the van, there's nothing really exciting to show, but I built this cargo net in here, which has saved me a lot of space. It's got all my hats and sunglasses on it. And at the minute, I've got my skis living in the front here as well. With my Bluetti power bank, which has been a real game changer for having things charging outside and on the go. Right, shooting. All right, if you come inside, I'll show you everything done on the inside. This is gonna be a bit more difficult. Make sure you take your shoes off. <laughs> this counter is all from Wix, it's all beach. I've managed to chop it up into one, two, three, four sections. You've even got the extendable table here to give me tons and tons of room. The sink, I got everything off Amazon. It's got a 25 litre container underneath and I just use it for washing and random bits of water. I don't actually drink from this. I keep water separately that I drink, but you can take this off and squirt your neighbors or if you really wanted to have an outside shower. Ooh. From my last van, I wanted to bring in tons of sunlight. I made lots of windows. I've got a skylight number one, which is a Max Air skylight, which has also got a fly screen and a blackout screen. You've then got window number two, which is one of the first Safari pop-up windows in the UK. So when you actually pop all the buttons out, you can push it out, which lets a lot of air in. And it's also got another fly screen. In some, of, in, some of these, <laughs> in some of these fly screens come in dead handy with the amount of flies and mosquitoes that you get in the Alps, especially when you're near lakes and water. I've also got a little peephole window for the end of my bed so I can see out there, again with fly screens. This is really handy for letting in tons of ventilation through the van. And then finally, I've got this Chinese extractor fan which blows air in and out and also has a surgically bright light on it which is really bright. I never use that. That, that at night blinds you. <laughs> From my last van, I learned that the overhead storage, anything overhead is just wasted space. So I built tons of overhead storage. So I've got five overhead storage cabinets that have all my clothes in here. Each cabinet has a spotlight that goes underneath it to make it easy. And then the ones here, more clothes. And then these two, I've just got tons of food in. Nice and simple. Talking about food, I've got my fridge. It's a 45 litre fridge freezer. It's a bit empty at the minute, but it's dead handy because it's out of the way when I need it to be. I've got a double gas LPG burner. It was a bit of a nightmare to install. It's got an external fill up point, but the gas lasts absolutely ages. I've got a, I believe 13 kg tank. I think you can see it in here. You can see it. Let's move all my fruit and veg out of the way. In here, there's a bit of wasted space, but I've got my diesel heater, which is gonna keep me warm at night. My diesel tank, so I just need to fill that up whenever I need more heat. And then I keep all my fruit and veg just locked away in here. I would put a shelf in there if I was gonna build it again, just to maximize space. This is my kitchen drawer. It's just got all my stuff in it. <laughs> it's a very random drawer. Knives, teas, more knives, cutlery, playing cards, you name it it's in there. These two drawers have all sorts of things from camera equipment to pots and pans to my drills and my DIY stuff. I decided to leave a hole here and actually build this through. I know some people leave the bulkhead in or some people put it through. I personally wanted a nice large kitchen space for cooking and also have the emergency like escape hatch but also lets a lot of light in. The only downside to this is that it does get cold if you don't block this off and this wall is insulated with 25 mil foam board insulation as well as the floor. So it keeps the van really well. I built some overhead cab storage, which is literally just putting a piece of wood through there. And that gives you so much more room. It has all my coats in it, which takes them out of the way. And then I have all my hats and everything underneath that. So it doubles up coats on top, hats and scarves and stuff like that on bottom. This is a bit of a luxury thing. Uh, I see a lot of people put the roof out of this wood or paint it. I use a, I use a three mil ply and then used 18 mil wood, which I cut and varnished myself. 
to give it that nice slatted look across the roof. It does weigh a lot, but I think it looks really nice. One thing I wish I did more of is more plugs. I've got two plugs here. My four-way light switch for all the spotlights. I've also got a double USB plug there and another double one by the end of the bed. I wish I did put one more towards the head headway of the bed and also maybe a plug socket towards the end of the kitchen as well. Under both the seats is storage, so you just literally need to pop them up. And then that's where I keep all my dirty clothes and my cycling gear. And then under the one that I'm sitting on now, the water pump and the water filter is, and also some extra storage under there as well. The bed is a double width, 135 centimeters, and it is just shorter than a double length. It's five foot 10. I had to cut out into the actual frame. I had to cut out into the insulation to get these few extra inches, which means I can fit perfectly lengthways. Again, if I built it again, I would put one of the pods on the outside just to extend it by a little bit more. The floor is framed out with 25mm battens with 25mm insulation foam in between. It's then got a 9mm ply on top and then a vinyl floor on top of that. The walls are all insulated and then I put some 6mm cladding and then cut it to size, varnished it and stuck them on. Gives it a nice simple lightweight finish and nice and insulated. Alright, let's go to the back. I've got an aluminium ladder fitted to the back which gets me on top for the solar panels. And again in the back you can see I cladded the back doors painted everything else black to take away that sharp white finish that it leaves. I've hung up some tools here and I've hung up my axe and my saw for making fires here. In the back of the van you've got my off-grid electric system. We've got 210 amp hour AGM batteries. All Victron stuff was supplied by Vonkt vans. And then we've got the MPPT solar charger, a bus bar, and then we've got isolation switches as well so I can turn it off and on when I want to work on anything inside the van. The mattress is a, I don't even know how big that is. The mattress is a six inch memory foam that I got done off Amazon. It was custom made, only cost 140 quid, which I thought was really, really good. And then I've got all my mountaineering equipment, my triathlon equipment, hiking equipment, camping equipment, paddleboard and everything just shoved in the back. I think that should be it. I'm gonna show you on the roof now by other videos because I've got a bad leg. So I've got 315 watt solar panels all mounted with Unistrut that are painted black. So that's my full self-converted van tour. It took me 77 days. I did it all through YouTube, help from videos, vlogs and online help. If you have any questions about the van, let me know. Hopefully you were inspired to build your own and I'll see you out there on the road. You. Yeah.